Hello and welcome back. So in the past videos, past 12 lectures, we have been looking at how to store data, data, how to make data relational to other pieces of data, and how to start actually programming in Python with loops, branching, functions, classes, and even start working with text files. All of that is going to be very useful to know when you are uh, creating your DH projects and implementing Python. However, any DH project would be incomplete without utilizing and taking advantage of the myriad of libraries and modules that are available for free um, via pip install. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. But this video is going to be the point at which we start changing tax in this course. We are now going to be working with modules and libraries in depth. And I want to spend this video not necessarily coding anything, but kind of introducing you to some of the key libraries and modules that we're going to be using and really kind of what they are and how they're going to be useful. And I would encourage you right now uh, to take a moment and open up your command prompt. This is going to be useful in just a second. So what is a module? A module or a library is something that's open source oftentimes, and it's been coded by uh, various programmers, um, top-notch programmers usually. All the ones that we're going to be using are done, by, uh, are done and maintained by a strong Python community. There's other ones that are done by people who have less experience that are just as good, but for DH, I have found that there's really um, a handful of ones that you're going to find yourself using in almost every project. And these are regex, XLRD, XLX, SX, Writer, Requests, Beautiful Soup, Pandas, and TKEnter. I want to talk about each of these uh, in depth when I address them throughout the course, but for right now, I want to talk about them kind of on a surface level so you know what they are and why they're useful. So a library or a module is essentially just a collection of classes or a collection of functions that you can call in your Python script. And the way in which you're going to actually call them is by using this import function. Essentially, at the top of your Python uh, script, you're going to say import regex or import re is what you're actually going to do. Uh, but you're going to import that library, which will allow you to call any function that the library uh, contains. And the way in which you're going to be able to do that is by something called pip install. So all you have to do if you've installed Python correctly and you've set up uh, uh, the correct path automatically, like I recommended in the first video, all you're going to have to do is type in pip install and type in whatever uh, library you want. XLRD, for example, would install the uh, XLRD library. This is not going to install because I already have it installed. As you can tell, it's notified me that the requirement already satisfied because I have it installed. What I recommend is going through and installing each of these um, either during this video or after this video is over before moving on to the next video. That way you have everything installed correctly and won't have to pause videos to actually go and install the library. And we're not going to be really working with anything other than these, uh, these ones here. We are going to install one or two probably in our XML lectures, and that's because there's some really good libraries out there for handling. XML files. For right now, though, just install all of these. So by installing all of these, you're going to be able to save yourself lots of coding, lots of time, like months of time coding specific functions. Um, and you're able to just utilize someone who's already done all the work for you. So what each of these are going to do is they're going to allow us to do very specific things. Regex, which we're going to see in the next uh, two lectures in detail, is very good for handling strings. What regex allows you to do is it allows you to call a string and find specific characters in a string that meet certain criteria. Now, we saw how we could find specific uh, words in a string using the find function. Regex is way more complex and way more powerful. We can find account for some variants. We can find a specific uh, string of random any two numbers and any two characters after those two numbers. When we start playing with it, you'll see why this is very powerful. It allows us to go through and interrogate our data and structure our data and extract information from our data the way no other module or library can. So we're going to be using that in all of our DH projects. I promise you, it's one of those things I recommend getting familiar with it um, as soon as you possibly can. In the next two videos, I'm going to show you some great online resources for getting more comfortable with regex and kind of testing regex. 
The next one on here is XLRD. XLRD is going to allow you to open up and read um, Excel files. You will find more times than not that if you're working with uh, third-party data, uh, this will probably be stored in an Excel spreadsheet. XLRD allows you to look at an Excel file of any size. I've worked with it up to 22,000 lines in a single sheet, uh, rows, and it allows you to just kind of go through and iterate in for loops across all of that data very quickly, very efficiently, and um, it's very, very useful. The next thing you need to have here is XLSX Writer. XLRD and XLSX Writer are going to be used in conjunction with one another. And the reason is because XLRD only allows you to read an Excel file. XLSX Writer allows you to write to one. So it allows you to take data and actually import it into an Excel spreadsheet. And you can do, you can write row by row, you can skip rows, you can do whatever you want. It basically allows, it's, it's an automatic um, Excel spreadsheet creator, essentially. Uh, requests is going to be something that we work when we work with web scraping. Uh, requests is a library that allows you to visit a, um, a specific website and extract specific data uh, between tags or uh, specific text on a page. It allows you to fill out forms on a page. Very, very powerful. And it's almost always used in conjunction with Beautiful Soup. What Beautiful Soup is able to do, it's able to take the data from requests and interpret the HTML or XML and parse it out and actually produce a, um, allow you to actually extrapolate data uh, in a much more useful way than just requests does. Uh, the next thing on here is pandas. We're going to be working with pandas only a little bit in this series. Uh, and the reason why I've included it here is it's because it, pandas is a great way to kind of get used to stop thinking about data in external programs like Excel and start thinking about data in purely Pythonic terms. And Pandas functions kind of similar to Excel. It's got rows, it's got columns, but it's far more powerful than Excel because the data handled by Pandas is being handled and used uh, in Python's memory. So we can do a lot more with it once we've got it stored in Python's memory with Pandas. And the final thing that we're going to be doing and this will be kind of at the end of the this lecture series on an introduction to Python. It's going to be tkenter, tkenter. I've never known how to pronounce it. What this is, is it's a graphics user interface module library, which means that you can create user interfaces that allow you to do very uh, targeted functions with buttons. It allows you to have check marks. It allows you to have places where you can type in strings and commands. It basically allows you to do everything outside of a Python uh, script. And this is useful because Python, I think when it was first introduced in the 90s, was never really meant to have a user interface. You were supposed to interact with Python in Python. However, not all users want to do that. And not all clients, if you're writing a Python project for someone, want to interact with Python within the code itself. TKinter allows you to have a user interface to make Python much more user-friendly for the, either the novice programmer or the person who has no programming experience whatsoever. That's going to be kind of at the end of this lecture series. I have it slotted for lectures 30 and 30, or lectures number 30. So that's kind of the, the main modules that I want you to spend some time with and just download. Don't play around with them too much right now because we're going to go through and talk about them in depth in the next, uh, what do I have here, next 17 or so lectures. As we go through and we learn how to interrogate data, manipulate data, store data, create data, uh, create data, populate data in Excel, um, strip data from websites, and all of that fun stuff. But for right now, just go off and just download all of these and install them using pip install. So thank you for listening. I'll see you in the next video.